Dispirator might be the best map on all of Ark Survival Evolved, and now you're taking on this behemoth of an expanse. Well, I would like to offer my 10 best tips and tricks to conquer Fjordr. This list doesn't really have a specific order, but I did try to order it from beginner tips to more advanced. So enjoy and let me know if you have any other great ideas in the comments below. Number 10 is starting off strong. A huge help for players just starting and maybe even some veterans didn't even realize that you can teleport you and your dinosaurs from wherever you are by holding R on your PC, X on Xbox, and Square on PlayStation. The teleport has a detailed list of regions around the map as well as other realms. On top of that, each region has north, east, south, and west subcategories, so go test them out and explore the map. Number 9 is going to be bumping up that fortitude. Fjordr can be a very dangerous map, and sometimes the most danger you'll be in is your environment's temperature. Being a very cold map, I recommend getting your fortitude up to at least 30 and at most around 40 just to be safe. Number 8 is taking advantage of Fjordr's rune system. Uniquely, Fjordr has red floating runes, 200 in fact, scattered all around the map. The red symbol in the bottom right of your screen tracks how many you have collected. They act like the notes on regular story maps, and in my opinion, a genius thing to add to a DLC map, making level progression more reasonable than any other DLC map that's harder to level up on because they have no XP boost similar to notes. There are also milestones for collecting these runes that boost the max level of your survivor, and collecting all of them will give you a special skin for the tech sword called Mule. Near. It is so cool, so gotta catch them all. Coming in at number 7 is going to be a resource rich base location. This lake is the best place to lay down a base, whether you live in the secluded cave by the side of the water, in the middle of the lake on an ocean platform like I did on my personal playthrough, or just on the coastline. Trust me, this spot is a great one, and here's why. The surrounding mountains house obsidian and rich metal deposits. Just on the edge of the lake, you'll find a few crystal veins. The lake also houses oil if you swim below the surface. It's a great spot to farm whatever you need, and it's central to most of the biomes around the main portion of the map. Here are the coordinates to check out this awesome base spot, and here's one more bonus tip. If you want to get ahead of the curve, dropping down the mountainside from where the lake is, you'll find this cave full of some great loot drops. Number six is going to be taking Taking advantage of one of the unique spawns on this map, the Desmodus. This creature is a simple tame if you come prepared. By using the Blood Syringe tool to farm your blood, throw it on your last hotbar slot and run up to your future Desmodus. It will pick you up and eat the blood off of your hotbar, but you definitely don't want to let your blood packs run out or else it will steal your survivor's health. Now that you tamed your Desmodus, we are halfway through this tip because this fickle little bat can craft sanguine elixirs. With 200 blood packs, this special elixir will add a perfect 30% of taming onto the progress bar of whatever you're taming by consuming it next to that creature. And to wrap up the Desmodus, it can turn invisible at night, use night vision, latch onto walls, and finally almost instantly heal itself if its health gets too low, given that there are enough blood packs in its inventory. Number five is a really special one to me because I love this tame for so many different reasons. This creature's name is the Maywing. The Maywing has a slew of amazing things it can do, but for this video, we are going to highlight its incredible speed while gliding around. This huge map can be sliced down to seconds of traveling time on the fuzzy backs of these little milk duds. I'm trademarking that, by the way. If you were wondering, that's not all the Maywing can do. With its saddle on, you can hold and nurse up to four babies in its inventory, and it can spew milk from its, um, Maywing appendages. They don't have genders, so they can be bred with any other Maywing you'd like. I could talk all day about these little dudes, but that's a video for another day. So on to tip number four, and that is going to be Fjordhawks. Also a unique tame to this map, so let's be honest. Get this out of the way. Fjordhawks can suck to tame, being a difficult passive tame. There are already plenty of videos online with tricks to tame them, so let's assume you already tamed your own Feared Hawk. So what's the hype? Feared Hawks will bring your inventory to your feet as you respawn from your most recent death, given that they were on your shoulder at the time of death. If you want to abuse this ability, my favorite trick is to bear run into a wyvern den, grab an egg, and pop a death candy, I mean organic polymer, to instantly die and instantly have yourself some wyvern eggs. It's maybe the easiest way to get them now. Beware, dragons can kill your feared hawk pretty easily if you don't kick the bucket fast enough. Also, I like to load up my body on tons of metal and then pop another organic polymer and then be right back in my base with all my stuff. Number three on this list is going to be my other favorite creature, the R Thylacolio. Why R though? Besides looking cool, these guys have a boosted 5% melee over the plane counterpart with 3% less health, but it's a crazy good trade-off and definitely worth it. 
Thylas do bleed damage, which is great for fighting bosses because it's a percent of the creature's health that is attacked, not the individual damage. So it bleeds down a boss's naturally high health very fast. And if you're still doubting the R Thyla, just look at this great pattern they have. But back on track, there are also great tames for basic survival on the map and grinding runestones from alphas with that bleed. Oh, so smooth. Maybe I'm a tad bit biased, so let me know what you think about regular and R Thylacolios in the comments down below. Okay, okay, I get it. You're ready for a tip not about amazing dinosaurs. Well, you're in luck, because tip number two is deep sea spelunking. Girder is home to a number of shipwrecks on the ocean floor. These sunken ships hold treasure chests that yield the highest tier of loot. They are few and far between, though, with how much you'll actually get from these dudes is about like two or three items, but they have a high chance of ascendant loot and they have very overpowered stats. On screen are the map locations of all the shipwrecks around Fjordr. Coming into number one, the last tip on this list is Bela the mini boss. Bela is a giant bee in a cave at these coordinates. If you've killed enough alphas to obtain 30 runestones, you can challenge Bela to a fight. She is by far, in my opinion, the easiest boss you can grind on Fjordr or really any other map. And you absolutely should if you need some quick element or anything else. And best of all, you can easily defeat her with one well-leveled Giga. Or most efficiently, I'd say use a couple of good Megatheriums. Their bug-killing bloodlust boost will quickly deal with this boss. Although, it wouldn't be a bad idea to use both the Megatherium and a Giga if speed is what you're looking for. Fjordr always has something new to discover across the vast expanse of terrain and realms, so get out there and conquer this great world. There are so many discoveries we haven't even talked about, like the hidden wyvern dens, the treacherous rock drake cave, and speaking of caves, the countless number of caves to explore around every corner. So to you all, I wish the best of luck. I'm Survivor, and I'll catch you in the next video.